Hi, I'm Angie Jones, a senior automation engineer at Twitter. There's a lot of talk about AI and machine learning and its impact on testing. I want to cut through the hype for just a moment and focus on the basic fundamentals of what machine learning is. I volunteer often with youth groups and I teach them about various topics in technology. And when I teach them, I do so at the simplest level to ensure that they understand the basics. Today, I like to take that same approach to explain machine learning and highlight some of the things we should be on the lookout for as testers. Machine learning is a form of artificial intelligence that is available for use today. It observes patterns and it learns from these patterns and then it uses what it learns to make predictions. So this is essentially machine learning in a nutshell. Fundamentally, it's pretty straightforward. Like I mentioned, machine learning is in use today. Where, you might ask? Well, ride-sharing apps such as Uber use machine learning to do things like determine the price of your ride, minimize your wait time, match you with other passengers if you choose to do a pool, or determine the estimated arrival time of your ride. Email providers, they use machine learning to filter out spam and do things like categorize your email so that it's more manageable. Banks even use machine learning for things like mobile check deposits to decipher and convert the handwriting on checks into text. With machine learning becoming more and more ubiquitous, it's important that we as testers understand what it is and more importantly, understand the vulnerabilities that we should be on the lookout for. Today, we'll use machine learning to identify images, much like social media networks such as Facebook that want to tag your friends when you upload photos. We'll have a look at how this is done using a very simple use case. Now, if we wanted to test the use of machine learning, we could essentially do so in three steps. One, we decide on the scenario. Two, we feed data to the system that supports that scenario. And then three, we quiz the system on what it's learned about the scenario. Okay, let's get started. Today, we're going to use IBM Watson's visual recognition service to teach the system how to recognize two different fruits, grapefruit and lemon. Let's go. The second step is to feed the system data to support the scenario. So here I'm using IBM Watson's visual recognition and I essentially have two categories, grapefruit and lemon. So I need to feed the system images of both so that it can observe the patterns in those images and be able to make a model for each. So that's what I'm going to do now. Now that we've fed the system examples of the scenario that we wanted to learn by giving it 10 examples of grapefruit and 10 examples of lemon, we can allow the system to create a model. And the model is essentially a representation of what the system has observed, the patterns that it has observed. And it utilizes this model later to make predictions. So let's train it. Okay, so we've completed the first two steps. One, of deciding what the scenario is, and then two, of feeding the system data to support that scenario. Now we're going to move on to step three, which is quizzing the system to see if it learned what we wanted it to, to learn about the scenario. 
okay? The scenario, of course, was to differentiate the lemon from the grapefruit. So this is a block programming system called Scratch. Um, so I wanted to use this to kind of show uh, the programming in a fun, light, hard hit way um, without necessarily digging into code since, you know, people understand different languages and things like that. So um, what I'm going to do is write the block code and basically say, when this green flag is clicked, which is the play button, then I would like for the system to pretend like it's thinking a little bit and then um, say something. And what I wanted to say is, I would like it to say, I think this is a, and, um, this is a recognized image block. So this is one of our machine learning blocks. So I can say recognize the image and I can give it the image that I wanted to recognize. So this costume image is what I wanted to recognize. And if I look under costumes tab, then this is the costume image. So this is the script for recognizing the lemon. And I'm going to do the same thing now for the grapefruit. So let's quickly write that same bit of code. And just make sure that that one is the grapefruit. Perfect. Okay. So let's run it. And it's going to basically use the model that we've trained um, to determine what these fruits are. So let's see what happens when we run it. Ah. So if we make this big, let's look. So didn't turn out how we thought. Um, the system thinks that the first fruit is a grapefruit and it thinks that the second fruit is a lemon. Let's explore. So we see that the machine learning algorithm clearly didn't learn the proper thing. But why? The images that we train the system with more or less look like this. So the grapefruit is up top and the lemon is at the bottom. But these were the images that we tested the system with. Notice any difference? So these again are what we trained with. These are what we tested with. Trained, tested. In the training set we had a bunch of photos of grapefruit on a dark background. And we fed the system the entire picture and said that it was a grapefruit. The system is not smart enough to know exactly what to focus on in the picture. So it didn't know that the round thing in the middle was all that mattered. The same thing happened with the lemon being on a light background. So it seems that what the system learned is that a round thing on a dark background is a grapefruit and a round thing on a light background is a lemon. So the lesson here is that there are subconscious observations that we make as humans that we can't expect machines to be able to do automatically. Okay, let's revisit the way we train the system. If we look here, all of the grapefruit again are on the same dark colored background and the lemon are on the same light colored background. So obviously this is not a good training set. So we're going to delete um, everything in here and start over. And this time we'll give it a more diverse training set. 
so that it can learn to focus on what's common in the images, which would be either the grapefruit or the lemon. Now we're going to go ahead and train the model with our new data set. So let's delete the model that we already have and then we'll train the new model. Okay, so we've trained the new model now. So we can go ahead and run our script again using the new model to see if we've improved. So let's go full screen and we'll run it now. Beautiful, so it's working now. It knows that the top one is a lemon and that the bottom one is a grapefruit. And this is really good because we had very backgrounds on both the lemon and the grapefruit. And so given a particular background, it still knows that it was the lemon that it should have focused on in the grapefruit. So. Perfect. Now, let's look at a few real world examples where similar goof ups occurred. A group wanted to train a machine learning system to be able to distinguish a wolf, which is up top, from a husky, which is at the bottom. They fed the system several pictures of wolves and labeled them as such, and then several pictures of huskies and labeled them as such. When they tested the system with additional images of wolves and huskies, it was pretty much always correct in being able to distinguish them. But eventually, there was a photo that the system incorrectly identified. The group was puzzled by this and upon closer evaluation, they realized that in this photo, the wolf was in grass and in all other photos, the wolf was in snow. So what the system had learned was that an animal with this shape on snow is a wolf and an animal with the same shape on grass is a husky. Another case, there was a subway station that wanted to use machine learning to detect when it was busy and to open additional doors within the station when there were large crowds of people so that they can help traffic flow. So what they did was um, just on the random, you know, typical day, they recorded a video and then um, fed the pictures from the video to the system. And so they had pictures of the station being crowded and then pictures when it wasn't crowded. So this seems to work beautifully. They got it to the point where the doors were opening when the system was busy, um, when the station was busy and then closing, you know, when they weren't. Until one day, it was actually a holiday, and the extra doors still opened even though the station was not busy. Well, come to find out, the system didn't learn about the crowd sizes at all. What it learned was to read the clock that was on the wall in those images. And because at certain times of the day, the station is usually busy, the doors opened at those times. What we saw so far were unintentional goof-ups, but there are also ways to maliciously trick machine learning systems. And this can be done with the use of adversarial images. You see, machines, they don't process images the same way that our human brains do. The way we look at a human face is not the same way that the machine does. The machine is simply looking for a pattern of pixels. So if you know the pattern of pixels that it's looking for, it's easy to trick it. So researchers at Carnegie Mellon, they knew this, and they made abstract looking glasses that contain the pixels of other people's faces. And when they put the glasses on, the machine was tricked into seeing a totally different face. So people were incorrectly identified as the person that they were posing as just by having the assumed person's pixels on the glasses that they were. This of course is a huge security risk. And then here are a bunch of other misclassifications of images. 
You see how easily the system can make a mistake based on the patterns that it learns. So it's really important for us testers to make sure that any application we're delivering that utilizes machine learning has been thoroughly tested. So that was machine learning in a nutshell. I hope that this show and tell has given you a better understanding of the basic fundamentals of machine learning as well as giving you ideas of some of the vulnerabilities that we can look out for as testers. Machine learning can be wonderful in assisting us, but we shouldn't put blind trust in it. Remember, its purpose is to provide predictions, not absolute truths. Testers are still needed to do the critical thinking and help aid our team in ensuring that our machine learning based products are not unnecessarily faulty. Thanks so much for watching.